Sham Sharanya, inside the bubble, joining us now live. Broke the story in the Lakers and Clippers voting to boycott the season. You know, Shams, it was really interesting. Um, I've, I've said this before. I like people who are willing to change their mind. It tells me they're curious and they listen. Two things in short supply in America. LeBron appeared to change his mind two or three different times in like 16 hours. How close were we to not continuing the season? Sorry for the technical difficulties. Yeah. There's no question. Uh, the, the league, the players, they were close. And when you have the two powerhouse teams in the NBA, the Lakers and the Clippers, vote to boycott the remainder of the season. Those players went into that meeting believing everyone would be on the same page. Everyone would be unified. But word started to get around in that meeting that the Bucs intended to play. Their plan was to continue playing. The Bucs really blindsided a lot of players, a lot of teams across the league when they made that decision. To They went rogue, essentially, and made that decision uh, to boycott the game. And a lot of the players followed suit. They also wanted to to unify and sit out uh, but once it got once it, it was clear that the consensus and the majority of players wanted to continue playing um you know the lakers and clippers went back that evening had their meetings w you know with each other with other rival players across the league and you know four or five in the morning uh into thursday the consensus was pretty clear among the players owners teams across the league that the games would go on Besides LeBron and players, was there a coach, perhaps, Shams, that had power in these meetings, that was being listened to, that had a plea on either side? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have the, the signature players, Chris Paul, Andre Godala, who are uh, NBPA leadership. But two people that were very vocal, I'm told, in that meeting were Doc Rivers, the head coach of the Clippers, and John Luke is the assistant coach in Houston. Doc Rivers' message to the players was, you guys need to look in the mirror to create real change. You guys are, are making the stand, but only 20% of you guys are registered voters. That needs to be 80, 85%. I'm told Rivers told the players. And that was a direct message that you guys have to get your own house in order before you can, you know, allow and, and create change. And John Lucas's message was similar in that you need to use your financial resources and empower people and put people in positions that can make these changes. And, and just trying to explain to the players how fortunate they are to have the platform, a platform he didn't have as a player decades ago. And so those are the two figures from a coaching perspective that did have a loud voice in the meeting. But other than that, that meeting was tense. It was all over the place. It was scattered. It had a lot of opinions. Obviously, two major teams you know, were planning not to play even uh, you know, late into Wednesday night. But as the hours went on, it became clearer and clearer. And Udonis Haslam asked LeBron James, asked the remain, remaining players in that room was, if you two aren't going to play, what does that leave for the rest of us? Because everyone understands if LeBron James and, and, and those two teams are not playing, there wouldn't be games. You know, it's, it's, I think we've, I've said this about the NBA. We're very fortunate in my lifetime. Most of the greatest NBA players have also been great leaders and good guys. They don't get into trouble like Magic and Bird. And I mean, you can just go through them and, and, and Shaq and, and, and uh, Duncan and LeBron. They're listeners. They're, they're, they're vocal. They're, they're good guys I'd want at face of my league. Um, it's interesting with LeBron because he's really embraced power, Shams. Uh, Michael Jordan was rich and talented and popular, but a lot of times didn't want to deal with certain conflicts with GMs and owners. LeBron's put his arms around all this stuff. Uh, and I, I wonder sometimes, did, did, do you think Doc got through to LeBron? Does LeBron have certain people that he listens to, Shams, around the NBA? Because LeBron's obviously capable of listening to stuff and changing his mind. Who does LeBron lean on, I guess? Uh, I think LeBron was talking to a lot of people uh, late into Wednesday night, into Thursday. You know, you have your teammates people in his inner circle um, and just trying to get, you know, LeBron James, I'm sure has connections to, to, to whether, you know, it's business figures, politicians that he really trusts everyone in, in, in the industry, I'm sure uh, he can rely on. And so, you know, from my understanding is he, you know, underwent a lot of conversations Wednesday night, Thursday morning, as did a lot of other players, just soul searching, trying to figure out what the best decision for the collective was. And when he, and the Lakers uh, arrived to the meeting, you know, 45 minutes late, I'm told, on Thursday. The decision was pretty much made. The Lakers were on board, and LeBron James understood the majority of players um, wanted to continue playing 
And at the end of the day, LeBron James has always been an advocate for playing as long as the environments were safe. And, you know, if everyone wanted to sit, I think LeBron James would have backed that as well. So it was about the majority of players. And, you know, LeBron James has a responsibility he's put on himself in terms of taking stands and and really being a, a, a vocal presence in, in social, uh, you know, culture. Yeah. All right. Good stuff, Shams. Good update. That that Doc Rivers is fascinating. So Doc Rivers came out and basically said, hey, 20 percent of you guys are registered to vote. It's got to be 80 percent. And by the way, that's not an easy message because the players had the momentum and the leverage here. And for Doc to stand up to him, I mean, that's notable, right? Like that, that that's a big moment. That's that that would be hard for me as a player to not consume and go. Yeah, I, I'm a little responsible, too. Like, that's a real message, right? Yeah, there, there's no question. Doc Rivers, his big message to those players was you guys need to get uh, the house in order first and the, just the platform that these players are afforded. Um, I, I think what him and John Lucas wanted to get across was, the, the, you know, how important it is to really use the platform. And, you know, another thing John Lucas told the players was, was, you know, where is this type of energy when there isn't, you know, shooting of Jacob Blake? Why isn't this more consistent? And, you know, these players gathered and met um, this week. But, you know, I spoke to one player and he said, why weren't we doing this the first week we got to Orlando? Why wasn't this being held uh, initially as we rebooted the season? And so there are a lot of questions. Again, Colin, this is a complex situation. There's no right. There's no wrong answer. Um, Just a lot of people trying to make the right decision. Good stuff. Uh, Always love your work, Shams. Thanks so much for joining us in the bubble, bud. Thanks, Colin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.